Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. Today we're going to be talking about um, sort of what to look out for when you're buying a P3 Volvo. Uh, this is a 2009 S80, but um, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about will involve also things on the V70 and XC70 platform as well. So uh, stay tuned and let's get straight into it. So one of these points um, are sort of things that I've learned firsthand from this car. This is my 2009 Volvo S80 D5, and um, I did quite a bit of research before buying this car, um, purely because everyone would have you to believe that uh, sort of a 10-year-old European car is a bad buy, um, because there's so many things that could go wrong with them. Um, they've got big engines um, and everything like that. But to be honest, from my experience, it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, this car's been absolutely fantastic. Um, there are a few issues that I'm going to talk about now. Um, so, yeah, let's get into them. So, initially, um, first things you want to be looking at are service history, etc. These cars uh, can be fantastically reliable, provided they've been looked after well. This car's fitted with a D5 motor. Um, it's the 205 brake horsepower one. Um, and that was introduced in 2009. And before that, they had 185 brake horsepower. And then I think in 2012, it was um, with a facelift, they were equipped with a 215 horsepower. They're all the same engines. Um, they're just sort of tweaked and tuned um, slightly as Volvo sort of evolved the S80 lineup. Um, I think there's four sort of mid generations. This is the second generation uh, Volvo S80, as it was known. Um, which started in 2007 but that it had four different updates um, until 2014 when it was phased out replaced with the with the s90 um, so what what engine choices were available well in the uk uh, we were given a 1.6 diesel um, I think we should have the engine apron when we're talking about them. Um, yeah, the 1.6 diesel. Uh, there was also a 2 litre diesel um, and the 2.4 litre 5 cylinder diesel. That's what this car is. It's the D5. In terms of petrols, there was a 3 litre straight 6. Um, there was also a 4.4 litre V8, uh, which was actually built with Yamaha. Um, fantastic sounding engine. Really, really stolid um, stout block. Um, definitely one i would go for if i could if i could afford it uh, the only thing with that's obviously going to be running costs i think they also did a two liter petrol um which wasn't very popular at all um, because it was quite underpowered to pull such a sort of big car so those are sort of your engine choices my pick of the bunch will be um either the d5 or the late d4 which is a two liter um really really good engine basically gave the same poor performance figures as this engine but um uh, did slightly better fuel economy and cheaper tax so that's something to bear in mind um, and in terms of items that could break within this engine bay um, the first one and which is one I replaced uh, straight away is this upper top upper engine torque mount um, 30 quid plant from eBay um, you can literally bolt it in and bolt it out so don't be too worried if it um, is damaged but yeah essentially these bushings here perish and um cause you issues so just just get that done as soon as you as soon as you get the car if it hasn't been done already um but apart from that guys these engines are absolutely solid just make sure the cam belts have been done um as you can see these it has been done on this one um and these should be done every sort of 60 to 70 thousand miles if they're not done um you can obviously have cam belt snapping um and grenading the engine so just make sure that is done uh, for such a little basic thing um, and also make sure the water pump has been done at the same time you don't want to have someone who's sort of cheaped out on the maintenance on these things because like i said when they go wrong they do go wrong big style so um yeah that's sort of engine wise i would also just make sure there's a good service history with the oil um as you can see volvo recommends certain oil qualities and um their sort of service intervals every twenty thousand miles but i prefer to do them sort of every ten thousand miles um so i would prefer to see a car that's been serviced annually rather than um according to the mileage so bear that in mind as well um next what you may notice if you're looking at a few of these is that they tend to be uh quite sort of moist inside um, and that was because a lot of these cars have a leaking windscreen sort of up here uh, it's a very common issue on p3 volvos is that actually volvo forgot to essentially glue the top of the windscreen in um sorry if there's wind noise it's just a bit windy today um and they um 
they leak. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, in terms of suspension and everything, nothing really to report other than the fact these are fitted with Nivermat self leveling suspension standard. So bear that in mind. Um, they're about 500 quid a piece on this S80. Um, I think they're slightly cheaper because they use a slightly different design on the V70 and XC70. So um, that's something to bear in mind. Exhausts also tend to go. Um, they become loose and there's a few issues with those and sort of um, front wheel bushings, etc. So just sort of all age related stuff. It's a big heavy car. So um, there are bits that will sort of go wrong. In terms of the interior and technology, you want to make sure you have two keys because um, the Volvo key can be quite expensive. Also, you want to make sure that they work because you can have issues where if they don't work, um, well, then you're stuffed really. Uh, you need to get a new key anyway. So make sure that they work. Um, on the inside, make sure your windows work. Um, these are quite common little issues. Um, windows stop working um, and they can become quite an expensive headache because uh, they can cause battery drains and everything like that so whereas normally you just leave it um, if you don't use that window um, you actually start having to use it so that's a bit of a nightmare there these mirrors as well um, they're actually quite flimsy um, that one over there on my car doesn't work at all that one does um, touch wood at the moment so that's something to bear in mind um, to be honest i'm not sure what causes it um it's just sort of an age thing um they're a bit floppy anyway so i think that's probably something to do with it when you get in to the car make sure the key and everything works um, because they do have some sort of immobilizer problems sometimes as you can see the steering locks come off there which is nice um and sort of interior features just just test them all out like i said guys these these cars are reliable they do work well uh this is a 10 year old example as you can see the interior is holding up quite nicely um after well eighty seven thousand miles so yeah just sort of make sure everything works um in terms of systems such as the rti this is a big thing um make sure that it has its remotes um, if i just find it in my center console full of crap um it actually comes with a remote um so make sure that's present because they're not cheap from volvo um and if you've got one with this you, you can sort of see that it's been looked after these are obviously really easy to lose um or damage so will it come on no it's not going to come on we'll just um get the system to come on hopefully well, this is a great start so far on this video there we go just like that um and yeah just make sure that the remote works and everything like that make sure this system comes up and down easily um to be honest guys you're not going to use it um i don't ever use it i just use Waze or google maps etc so that's probably a better bet but um yeah other than that guys these cars uh, are very, very good. They're very reliable, very solid, well built as well. So if you buy one, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next video. Cheers.